Hi, I'm Denise Schroeder. I am a realtor. I'm a marketing consultant. I am a speaker, a coach, and now an author of the book Out of the Box. And I'm going to be chatting at um, the Prosperity Online Show, and I'm so excited about it. My hope is to inspire and encourage and empower and truly motivate you into action. All right, great stuff. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought in Denise. Denise is a coach, speaker, marketing strategist, realtor, and the author of the new book, Out of the Box. Denise, how are you doing today? I am fantastic, and I'm really excited to be here today. Your energy is infectious. Oh, I appreciate you. You see, when you're dancing tango, it does take two to tango. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that's the, true. The, the feeling is mutual. Now, Denise, I've seen a lot of your stuff around, and that's the reason we have you uh, on the show. You know, from your journey from uh, breaking the barriers, you know, that encompass every aspect of life, and you know, all the negative words that were spoken about you while you know you were actually creating something remarkable and actually becoming an author of this book. Just tell us a little bit about your journey and how we got to where we are. And also maybe how you got on Oprah, how you got on Steve Harvey's show, and how you are creating a movement, especially in the real estate uh, industry <laughs> in Oklahoma then. Well, back in 1999, I was, um, you know, I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. And Oprah was in my living room, you know, every day at 4 p.m. And so I was having some hormonal issues after I had my second baby and I kept going to doctors and I kept being pigeonholed and told, well, you just have postpartum depression. Well, I'd experienced that before and I knew I didn't have it. And so I kept getting second opinions, third opinions. Well, finally I was like, well, who else can solve my problem? But Oprah, right? So I wrote this articulate letter to her, never expecting this emotional dump to get any kind of response. And I got a response in about an hour from one of her lead executive producers. So that was extremely shocking and exciting and scary at the same time. They, um, Mary Donahue, she flew out to our house and she said, I just want to film you guys doing B-roll, which is like, you know, they're building our story to be on the show, like what we're doing in our everyday life. And I said, well, we're, I'm, you know, I'm a stay at home mom. It's not that interesting. You want to film me for nine hours, like <laughs> vacuuming, changing diapers, cooking, you know, all the things. And so then we flew back out to Chicago to Harpo Studios, and I can remember sitting in the front row of the audience, and I thought, you know, I can do this. They're just going to pan to me when Oprah directs a question at me. No big deal. I'm kind of really melted into the audience here. And about 10 minutes before we started to film, she said, I want Denise up here with me the entire show. And so I was like, okay, how do I walk up to Oprah without this like deer in the headlights, scared to death look in my eyes? And I sat down with her and immediately she had people that did things for her. She had all kinds of people that did different roles for her. So she did a little sign language um, signal under her chair. Someone changed her mules. Her She didn't like the shoes she had on. I remember she stood up, unbuttoned her pants and said, let's get comfortable. My pants are too tight. I ate too much over the weekend. And she just had a way of making me feel comfortable. And, and she looked at me and she said, Denise, you're sitting here because you have the gift of oration, but you're not afraid to be vulnerable and transparent. And I want you to pretend that we're sitting in my living room, having a girl chat. I just want you to focus on me, not the studio audience. She said, can you do that? And I said, well, you know, when Oprah asks you if you can do something, you're like, enthusiastically, you're like, yes, I can do this. So that show was my first, I guess, experience on a big stage with the power of being vulnerable and storytelling. And it was one of the highest rated shows that year. And so I got invited back six months later just to do a follow-up show. She had found out by doing, she paid for a whole battery of blood tests. I did not have postpartum depression. I had literally zero testosterone after having a baby and my hormones were all out of check. And so she wanted me to come back and just talk about how I was feeling, you know, health wise, since I got on the proper medication 
And the moral of that story is, and all your audience can, can remember this, we're our own advocates for our bodies. We know our bodies better than anyone. And sometimes we need to push boundaries to get people to listen to us. And so Oprah was instrumental in that. So about 23 years ago, I wanted to get my real estate license. I had worked in property management, which is leasing apartments condos. And I had a manager that said, look, we don't want to lose you, but the natural progression for you would be to get your real estate license. It's like, this is your calling. And I can remember standing there just like it was yesterday, feeling so seen and understood and just a spark, you know, a fire in my belly, you know, ignited. And at the time I, my kids had just gotten into, you know, first grade, you know, they're in school and I can have a little bit more freedom and um, I was surrounded by a network of people that said, well, you could never make it. You could never stand out. The industry is much too saturated. And why would you want to invest in signs with your superficial face on them with no yard to stake? Like how ridiculous. So I felt at that time in my life that I needed permission. I was in a different mindset in my journey that I, you know, I, I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't in a really healthy relationship. It was very dysfunctional. It was very toxic. And I didn't have a lot of support to do it, you know, to, to take the leap of faith. So I got out of that relationship. I went through a $50,000 custody battle um, in an effort to just kind of raise some money to get a retainer fee, because I knew the decision was I was needing to get out of the of the relationship at that time. And it was really difficult. Um, I was going through a, a, other things as well, because my mother had just been diagnosed with a hernia, but she actually had stage three colon cancer. And so it was a surgery that they went an exploratory surgery. And they said, we, we got the tumor. It was encapsulated your mom doesn't even have to do preventative chemo. She was 49. I'm 49 today. So this year has kind of been a little bit emotionally triggering for me because this was the age my mom was, you know, when she got this, you know, really terrible diagnosis and death sentence. And so she ended up um, being metaflighted to a bigger city and, um, because she wasn't getting better at the small town hospital she was in after that little surgery. And we found out later that the surgeon was in a hurry to get to a college football game and he left perforations all throughout her colon and cancer cells grew, you know, throughout the body metastasized very aggressively and violently into her liver. And she was gone a few months later, shortly after she turned 50. And so that was definitely a turning point in my life. And at the time I was, you know, still in this relationship, trying to navigate grieving this traumatic loss. You know, my mom was my best friend and, you know, closest human to me. And I had seen an advertisement on TV from a reproductive center. And it was saying that you could get $1,500 to donate your eggs. And this was quite diabolical, but I thought this would be enough money for me to get a retainer fee to get out of a situation that I know I don't need to be in. And so I gave myself hormonal shots, like injections, three times a day for about eight weeks. I was swollen. I was bruised. I was a hormonal mess from pumping myself with all of these crazy hormones. And it was just a really dark time. I can remember feeling like I couldn't even put my feet on the floor. Like I had an elephant on my back, you know, giving my kids pop tarts seemed like a marathon. And so it was really difficult. Um, I finally got out of that relationship. And fast forward 10 years later, my story gets better. Okay. It gets brighter. Hang on to your hats. Okay. <laughs> so I, um, I'm working in an office and in like, if you've ever watched Seinfeld, I don't know if that's popular in Australia, yes, but there's a yes. character named Kramer and he opens the door and he just like swings the door open. And he's pretty aggressive when he opens the door, you know, you never miss him entering a room. Well, Troy was my FedEx guy and he would come in the office that I worked at like Kramer wow. and he was, you know, big blue eyes, thousand watt smile, sexiest legs you've ever seen in your life. And we saw each other every day for five years before our first date. 
well, after our first date, pretty much the rest was history. I knew he was the one. I um I felt really blessed that I was going to get another chance at love. And we got married. We blended five teenagers and four of them were girls. I'm going to pat myself in the back right now for making it through that, that circus of a life. We, they're all gone and we're empty nesters now. <laughs> that was really hard. And we quit our jobs on the same day within a year that we got married and everyone thought we were crazy. We were neglectful. We were, frankly, we were nutbags because we had $30,000 in the bank and we were taking the leap of faith to live the American dream. We had both wanted to do it and we had never had support or had partners that, you know, decided to lock arms and like, let's do this. And so we were finally at the place to do it. And we didn't do real estate right away. We did a few other things and it was really difficult because those things weren't panning out. We had a friend of Troy's from childhood that told us we should get into financial services. So we got licensed and we found out that this man that told us he was wildly successful and that Troy trusted implicitly, he was actually going bankrupt. So he had lied to us after we have, you know, we've got seven mouths to feed and he's being dishonest with us about the position uh, with this company. So we did a few other things and uh, we didn't even tell our kids or any of our family or friends that we were not doing financial services, that we were doing like some other sales jobs because we were not going to go back and work for the man. But we didn't want to hear the negative chatter and why did you leave your job? Why did you give up your benefits? Like we didn't think our psyche could handle that. And so we just kept plugging away. And finally he had breakfast. Um, with a really great friend of his that had been in real estate um, 25 years. And he said, why don't you guys get your real estate license together? You know, Denise has always wanted to do that. And so he came home and told me, let's do it. And I literally felt like angels, you know, the choir was singing, you know, cue the confetti gun. Like it was a dream come true. And I sat him down and I told him, I said, here's the deal. I've literally waited decades decades to do this. Failure is not an option. We've had some other things not pan out, but this is, this is it. So we, we were in it and we didn't sell a house for seven months, seven months, no paycheck, but I'm a farmer's daughter. And so my dad was one of the people that was always so positive with me. He'd never worked for the man, always been self-employed. And he said to me, Denise, what have you known your entire life? I said, watching you plant, plow, nurture before the harvest comes. And the harvest comes. If you plant your seeds and you're consistent and you have your systems in place and you're doing everything you're supposed to do with integrity, your harvest will come. And so that last five months out of the year, we sold 40 homes. And I told him, you know, the average agent sells four to eight houses a year. So this was pretty paramount. And I told him, I said, we're going to use that negative seed that somebody planted in me years ago that told me I couldn't stand out. And we're going to be authentic. We're going to do business differently. Number one, you have to have a killer customer service experience, right? That's number one. Once you have your systems and process and your customer service experience in place, then you can work on your creativity, you know, implementing that into your model. And so we got credibility and we earned the right to really be creative in our marketing and almost quirky and some would call silly. We, um, we found that when we would take, like if I was taking you to buy a house, I would be constantly taking videos and pictures, almost like I'm doing a documentary of your experience buying a house. When you found the house you love, you know, we would do crazy fun jump shots in front of the house. I would bring props to closing. So we'd have party hats and glasses and champagne. And I mean, we would do the whole thing. If I took you on a house hunt, as crazy as our market has been, and you got the house, like it was multiple offers, and we were able to negotiate your family to get the house, we would show up at your house. And I don't know if you know what Publishers Clearing House is, but it's a lot of money that people in America used to win. And they would randomly come to your door and tell you that you won all of these thousands, sometimes millions of dollars. And so we would come and we'd have a big poster board that said, you got the house. 
And when they would open the door, we'd be dancing and yelling and just celebrating with them. And so we've just found a way to be really creative, um, showing our clients stories online. And, you know, at Christmas time, instead of just dropping a little gift of like banana bread or something on your porch with a note, we would actually, most people have camera doorbells, right? They have the ring doorbells where they can see people coming to their door. Well, that's like a stage for me. So we would do dance and dash. So we're doing like a dance. We're in our Christmas attire. We are spreading joy. We're better than Santa Claus. And so it's just been amazing what we've been able to do, like injecting this fun, quirky, joyful energy with our clients. And we've earned the right to get silly and fun with them because we're on point. We're doing our job. They know that we're market experts. We're keen negotiators. We're doing all the things. So they know that they're taken care of. And it's just, it's been amazing being able to use TV and the power of storytelling. Steve Harvey was a really incredible experience for us. I have always thought he was amazing. And we appeared on his show twice, once to be blended family experts and the other to be, um, to speak on, as a parent, I spoke on the dangers of teen technology, which is a very serious issue. And in the efforts from going on the show, Steve Harvey and I were able to get a stranger app removed off of the Apple store so that no kids could download it anymore because it was extremely dangerous for kids um, to be chatting with strangers. And so we've been able to use TV and every time we're in the news and in the media, it always goes back to Oklahoma real estate agent, Denise Schroeder, appearing on Steve Harvey, appearing on the Food Network, Worst Cooks in America, or HGTV, House Hunters. So you can use your platform. You don't have to use it just for your industry. You can use it to make an impact in a different in a difference with other topics that you're passionate about. And so that's what we've been able to do. Obviously, House Hunters has been pivotal. They didn't even want to come to Oklahoma. They thought we were just rednecks and we rode around town in wagons and were uneducated and they really didn't want to come here. And once they came, I, I convinced them to come. This is the fourth time and our episode, you know, is airing November 8th. And that's wild. And it feels surreal. They love Oklahoma. They think that you can get so much house for the money. And um, it's just been a wonderful experience to be able to use the power of major network TV. And in any business, they're always looking for content. So you can write press releases, human interest stories. You can volunteer, teach and speak. You can use podcast guesting. There's so many things that you can do to use the art of storytelling above and beyond like visual storytelling on your social media. And that was a absolute mouthful. And I don't even think I took a breath. So tell me your thoughts. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking we need to write another book. Like this, <laughs> this whole episode of your life, because your life story and all the uh, episodes that come through it have so many life lessons, so many teachings for a lot of people now i just really want to touch on um, um a, a few things i mean congratulations you um married the man of your dreams and you yes. managed to do something best package uh, that was ever delivered to me was my fedex guy absolutely <laughs> overnight uh, um you know delivery right there now you you seem to be very comfortable telling your story and very comfortable in, you know, using it as a teaching tool. How has that been really instrumental? Because a lot of people, when they start rising into success, they try and delete as many episodes mm -hmm. of their history as possible. And it sort of doesn't uh, show up as right. an authentic human being. How has your story and all the human interest, um, uh, you know, pieces that you're bringing together been very instrumental in maybe you getting publicity, you getting on all these shows and things of that nature? Because some people might not understand that really bringing, right. um, you know, your story, what's and all is exactly what people are searching for in any industry. So, you know, how is I think that? it starts with, with, it started with my healing. So, you know, I committed, I did 
two years of intensive therapy. Um, you know, I'd lost my mother. I had, you know, gotten divorced and it was just a really terrible dark time. And a lot of people go through loss and grief and divorce. It's very prominent. So I, I wasn't alone in this. So I was afraid to let the unhealed parts of me hurt other people. And I knew that a broken me was not going to pick a healthy relationship. So I owed it to myself and my kids to really reprogram and rewire myself. And I think that allowing like your failures to be your biggest educator, not a grave dig digger was really pivotal in my life because the failures, the denials, the mistakes, the trials, all the things that I've gone through, God has personally used those things so that I can have a track of empathy. You know, I became a divorce real estate expert because I know how hard it is to sell a home and go through divorce. I got my certification to be a family law mediator, not because I want to mediate divorces, but because I want to have the skill set to deal with high conflict because, you know, your real estate process is going on at the same time as the legal process. And they go at very different speeds and you need to have someone that's an expert to, that can keep things on track and be a neutral party. Because when people are going through divorces, they get in their own way. And so that was one of the ways that I've been used. My daughter um, had an eating disorder um, that we almost lost her. And I got asked, you know, out of the blue by one of the biggest churches in America to start writing content just to give parents signals if your child has an eating disorder, because it's a silent epidemic. It's a very shameful, hidden disorder. And so, you know, we, if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable we can connect with other people and we can be a beacon of hope and a lighthouse to others. That's the bottom line, but we have to commit to being vulnerable. And that means sharing the dark places. You know, I don't allow people to set fire to my forest anymore. I used to, I don't, I'm unapologetic. I'm non-negotiable about being who I am. And that came from me healing myself. And so it, it started with that. And it started with me being grateful for those things that I went through, even though when I was going through them, you know, I had pity parties like everyone, you know, why am I going through this? What have I done to deserve this? Like, really, can I just learn the lesson already to move into the next phase? Because this is hard. And then today I'm grateful for the grind. I'm grateful for that because it made me who I am today. I wouldn't be sitting here with you with a story to tell that can impact others. And I think for me, I've kind of, you know, we've sold 650 houses in 10 years and it's just been astounding. And I've moved from a place of proving myself to being really intentional. That's why I wrote the book. I wrote the book to share these unique marketing approaches that we've used to exponentially grow, become debt-free, to change our lives. But I want to empower and inspire and encourage and motivate people into action. And for me, I don't know how you are with comfort zones, but I used to be really scared and apprehensive about leaving my comfort zone. And I had a coach tell me one time, you know, I can tell when you get really close to your comfort zone, it's like you hear those alarms. I said, yeah, it's like chalk, you know, fingernails on a chalkboard. I want to back up. Yes. And I got comfortable because he told me, he said, you need to worry if you never hear those alarms, because that means you're not trying to change. You're not trying to evolve. You're not growing. You're not challenging yourself. And so today, now I crave those alarm bells. I crave hearing that because I know that means I'm getting ready to go through a breakthrough or I'm getting ready to accomplish something new. I'm, I'm getting ready to move to the next challenge. And so that is just part of my mindset that I was able to change to embrace you know, getting out of that comfort zone, not letting it freak me out, but actually thriving in it. Absolutely. Uh, that's such a beautiful statement. And um, I was just thinking while you were talking about all of these things, um, you know, how Steve Jobs met, uh, said in the commencement speech that you cannot 
connect the dots looking forwards. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. And if you really look at your story, you've connected your pain and suffering and you've created this beautiful, amazing gift that you're giving to the world every single day um, you know, of your life. So a lot of people go through, through life. They're being told they'll never amount to anything. They probably feel like a failure as a mom. They probably feel like a failure at work and then they just totally give up. But you did a 360 in your life and now you're- And I don't blame people. anyone else. You know, I was young. I made mistakes. I'm not Lily White. You're like, I don't blame anyone for anything that I went through. Does that make sense? You know, we we can't live our lives with the chip on our shoulder. It's a choice to get up every day and choose joy. And and I made that conscious decision to do that. And it's served me well. Fantastic. And now you are bringing joy to the world. Like you said, having sold 650, 60 houses. Um, you know, I remember when we got into our first home, it's not just bricks and mortar and a roof, it's no. memories, it's experiences. It's a place to to create dreams with your loved ones and things it's of that nature. It's a very nature. intimate experience when people trust you to, to help them. I mean, wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? You know, you, you get to know your realtor really well. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, because you're making a life change and usually property is one of the biggest purchases that a lot of people end up doing in their entire life. So you want to be with them, not just show them where to sign and things of that nature. I really like your um, dance and dash antics. (laughs) Isn't that fun? (laughs) My husband always kind of, he's like, do we have to do this? And then, you know, he puts on the Santa shorts and all the things. Then we're going out there and he's like into it. You know, he's like working the choreography. So it's, it's really fun because he's always been more of a, like a supporting role. He's a little bit more introvert than me. So I've had to drag him along, but once he starts doing it, he has so much fun. He, he really didn't like doing the TV stuff at first. And now he's really gifted at it. And he's become like, you know, the comedic uh, energy in the show's (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh that's uh, absolutely and that's amazing. stepping out of comfort zones absolutely well denise i mean i'm no stranger to coming out of my comfort zone i was born in zimbabwe i don't know if you know where that is yes and i just bought some zimbabwe currency <laughs> two days ago <laughs> we're, I we're billionaires the yeah, we're, we're billionaires right i mean obviously yes it's, it's a sign of the times but obviously someone told me to buy it Yes, yes, yes. I, I used to have some stuck on my wall just to remind me, you know, of um, where I've been and things like that. But, um, you know, Denise, somebody might be watching the show right now and just thinking to themselves, oh, I'm not as extroverted as Denise is. I'm not as uh, well-spoken. And my story is just clouded with all the darkness that everybody else is going through. What sort of encouragement or words of inspiration can you give to somebody to fully step into, um, you know, their own potential, their worth, their value, no matter what it is that they're going through? I mean, I think, first of all, it's evaluating who surrounds you. So your, your tribe is extremely important. Be intentional about, you know, the, we're the average of the five people we hang around the most, you know, it's, it's true. And so we are intentional about spending time with people that have a lot of success and doesn't have to be in our industry. They live life beautifully, both personally and professionally. And they're not just always there to put pom-poms, you know, up in the air and say, yay, you, we give them permission to pour critically if needed and hold our feet to the fire and to give us accountability. So evaluating that, I will tell you that every single person listening has a story and you may not be comfortable. You know, my, my son who's in law school now used to take F's for oral book reports and now he's in law school. So I I will tell you, not everyone thinks that they can talk in front of people, but can you get one-on-one? We can all talk one-on-one with someone else, right? And so don't just find your story. You've got to commit to being vulnerable to sharing it and not just telling it, but showing it. So even if you don't want to get on a big stage or a TV show, you know, maybe writing would be something that you could do because it seems more behind the scenes a little bit, but we all have the power every day, no matter what industry we're in to get up and choose to be missionaries 
Like we make a decision to seek opportunities to share and help people and build people up. And there's power of life and death in our words. And so I would encourage anyone that listens has the capability to at least share their story one-on-one. You can, you can really, really make a difference. Absolutely. And you have used your story as stepping stones. I mean, you've overcome so much loss and adversity in your life, and you are now becoming that lighthouse for others who actually have been held hostage by whatever negative mindsets or circumstances that they might be going through. Now, Denise, what would be the best way, you know, if somebody's watching this and just like you um, saw Oprah in your living room, you know, every day at 4 p.m. Yeah. And then you realize, wait a minute, this could be the person that could hear me out. And they might be seeing that in you, Denise. What would be the best way that somebody could maybe get a hold of you or just be in your presence to read more about the stuff that you've written sure. and where you're headed to? So you can find me easily on Instagram. You spell my name D-E-N-I-S-E. -E, so it's at Denise Sells Oklahoma. And you can message me on there. I would love to connect with you. And if you are interested and you want to dig a little bit deeper, you can find my book on Amazon. It's out of the box. And my name is Denise Schroeder, S-C-H-R-O-D-E-R. -E and I would love feed honest feedback. And I would really, really like to connect with anyone that's listening. I think it would be incredible to hear back, just feedback from what your listeners think just about after listening to my story. I think that it's really powerful when you can hear that you made a difference in other people's lives. So, you know, I always say, if you think it, say it, you know, send the text, make the call. So it, it's really powerful when you, when you can give people words of affirmation, I'd love to help anyone any way I can. Well, I kid you not, you have helped me personally right now, just sitting here oh hearing your story and everything else that you went through, anything that could possibly go wrong in anybody's <laughs> life happened to you, Denise. But here you are with a big smile on your face and telling us that everything is going to be okay. I cannot uh, thank you enough for your time today and actually, um, you know, just laying it out on the open there. So if you're watching this show right now, I would really, um, you know, appreciate if you reached out to Denise. I mean, obviously she's going to be busy with her TV shows and all the fame that she has now created for herself, huh. but it Never wasn't too always, busy. <laughs> it wasn't always like this. She's been able to draw from her failures in her past to actually, um, you know, drive her now uh, conviction and Denise and her husband Troy um, are running you know one of the fastest growing real estate brands in Oklahoma and she also does public speaking marketing consulting to small businesses while she's creating an authentic brand I think what we experience today is a gift that we will treasure oh, thank you. and I hope we were recording this because su stuff like <laughs> this <laughs> <Me too>. to... <laughs> otherwise it was just it was just between you and me and the authenticity <laughs> that you brought to the show today is absolutely uh, breathtaking and totally out of the box. Now, you can see that Denise proves you can have fun in your business, bring extreme joy to others that you're serving, and there's truly a happily ever after. I wish you all the best in everything else that you're going to be uh, doing and in true, um, you know, um, upkeep of everything that's been happening to you we would like to maybe invite you back again so we could do a, a repeat i'd love to, to see i can talk happened. on many different topics you <laughs> name it <laughs> absolutely is there is there anything that we missed out that you would maybe want to um maybe conclude this show with there denise um just that you know there's no dreamer that's too small and there's no dream too big and I'm living proof. It's never too late. I was 39 years old before I stepped into my calling. It's not too late. And, you know, you don't have to lose someone in your life to have a paradigm shift to truly live like you're dying. But I, I think that it's, um, it's a lesson learned that I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. I'll always push myself, you know, to live like I'm dying because we are absolutely not guaranteed tomorrow. 
That is powerful. And, um, you know, just looking from uh, out her book, um, Outside the Box, um, you know, Denise's intention when she wrote the book, and I think her intention when she came on the show today was to inspire, empower, and move you into action so you could take a leap just outside your comfort zone. Don't listen to those bells that Denise was talking about and ultimately just completely move out of your box. Denise, I can't thank you for the time you spent with us today. Thank you. I had so much fun with you.